सर्वनारी जाने मेरा जवाब आपसे उपस्थित हुए इकामला की उनको जिस दिक्कतों ने बात ले ये हम बेस पतामान बेस बिलेस वेरा वो बुलावा है उसे टिकांसेल सिलेंस आता है किसी ना मोवा मिले तेरा एन अकाउंटिस्ट लॉयर वेरी अचीव्ड इन द प्रोफेशन ऑफ लॉ एन अकाउंटिस्ट सिनेटर एंड फॉर्मर एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर इन द नेम ऑफ योर वर्शिप सिनेटर डेविड कॉल्टर he is the one who is leading and steering the ship in Bulawayo City Council as a mayor is the one who is leading and driving the investment of Bulawayo to try and bring back Bulawayo to the old Bulawayo that we grew up knowing uh, Bulawayo that was known of its cleanliness Bulawayo that was known of its sunshine status and Bulawayo that was known of its culture, traditions, and respect. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to our senator, Your Worship, David Coulter. disability with my tongue and I am not fluent enough to do you respect in this individual and so I'm going to ask the servants, Pastor Mahani, to approve. Said, I have to say, I, I feel very humbled. Um, you can't hear. You can't hear. Okay, is that better? Thank you. At the outset, I, I want to say that I am humbled by your presence today. And by this wonderful uh, demonstration of Indian culture to, to show that despite the fact that you are out of Zimbabwe, that you are away, away from your home, you are making sure that the next generation remembers where they come from and what their culture is. And that is, that is very important. to speak in English. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I want to start um, at, at the outset to, to thank the, the Joshua Moore Foundation for, for making this trip possible. Um, we have many challenges in restoring our city. The challenges are almost insurmountable but the one thing that can change it is goodwill when i see the goodwill of the foundation in bringing me down here when i see your goodwill when i see the, the goodwill of the citizens of our great city who have backed me i know it is possible for us to restore our city because goodwill, I think, is the most important thing in any organization to take it forward. If we have people together, and that's where I support what, what you said, this is not a partisan meeting. And when I was voted in as mayor, I said, I am not a partisan mayor because I and people like Councillor Mahlamu and all our councillors, we have to work for the benefit of all our citizens. Irrespective 
of what their political views are. Everyone needs water, everyone needs housing, everyone needs education for their children, everyone needs good health. And that is what I remain committed to, and so I, I so greatly appreciate what the, the Foundation has done. Just to go back a moment in time, my association with the Como family goes back to 1985. I was instructed by Joshua Como in 1985 to represent uh, his brother Stephen, who was detained at Kami prison. Um, at the time, I had also been instructed to represent a wide range of Zapu Central Committee members, including Sydney Malonga, Edward Mbrovo, Welshman Mabena, and many other heroes of Zapu and Zipu. And that is when my association began. And so despite my inherent disability that I've spoken about, I have a long, I have had a long and fruitful relationship with the Nkomo family, which continues to this day. Because Sibangi is where Michael Nkomo, Josh Nkomo's son, is a good friend of mine. And although he comes from a different political party, as you know, he is president of Zapu, we enjoy a very fruitful and productive relationship together. And he has been very kind towards me in this new position. He has backed me fully, despite the fact that I come from a different political party. So that goodwill that we see is what is going to cement our city. It is that goodwill, that unity of purpose, which is going to take us forward and restore our city. But I want to speak now about our city. And I want to, slightly humorous point, <laughs> starting. I've got this nickname now, Mlungizi. And in, I'm saying to people, that is a term that you, you earn at the end of your term, not at the beginning. It is very important. And so I'm trying to say to people, that's not my nickname now. Because you earn that at the end of five years, not at the beginning. You are only the fixer when you have fixed. Not when you say that you are going to fix. Am I not correct in that? So it is important that we all stay humble and sober because we have massive challenges. I want to say this as well, that although we did manage to stabilize the education sector in five years, this job that councillors and I have is far more difficult than the Ministry of Education. Far more difficult, infinitely more difficult. And I, I will explain to you, it's important that you understand. When I was Minister of Education, I had executive authority. I was the person clearly in charge of education. I had a budget that I could determine how to use. And it was a full-time job. This job, what has happened is that we are no I'm not an executive mayor. I am a ceremonial mayor. Last night I met with the mayor of Johannesburg. He's in a full-time position. Councillor Mahfano earns 22 US dollars a month. You might disbelieve me when I say that. That is what he earns. He gets an allowance of 22 US dollars a month. That is all. As mayor, I get 25 US dollars a month. If you might think that that is incredible, 
Mr. Moyer will confirm that as the council representative. That is what we earn. We are ceremonial. We are not executive. And so we are ha having to try and work on our city part-time, which is immediately different to Ministry of Education and the Minister of Education. Then the next thing is we have very deep-rooted problems in our city. We have grave shortages of water. Our sewage systems are not working. They are working at 20% capacity at present. 20% capacity. Those of you who have been home know the state of our roads. You have seen the litter. We are owed 20 million US dollars in unpaid rates. As a city, we used to be able to raise our own funds to fix roads. We used to get the, the receipts from licenses. When people paid their car license fees, that used to come to the city. Now it goes to Harare. It goes to Zimbabwe. This past year, we got, Mr. Moy, you can direct me, 600,000 US for the repair of our roads, I think so far, this year. It costs 15 million US dollars every year just to maintain our roads and we got $600,000 back from Zimbabwe. The same with our water. Our city built five dams. Caesar, Neva, Mzumbwani. Those are all city dams. Ratepayers of our city built those dams. But government said, oh, that's fine, but the water now belongs to us. That's what they said. We have to pay. Sorry, I, I said Zimbabwe earlier. Zanara for the roads. We have to pay Zimbabwe for our own water. The previous council asked that Bulawayo be declared a water shortage area because the councillors, our staff, know the situation regarding water. It was sent to the minister because the minister has to approve that the city is a water shortage area. He refused to approve. That meant that the previous council could not go to third parties to get the funding necessary to construct more dams and more pipelines. And then we have big political issues around water. If you go home and you read the Chronicle, they will tell you that the solution to Bulawayo's water is the Guashangani Dam and the pipeline. But it is only 74% complete. They have to build a pipeline 260 kilometers from Guashangani to Kandu Park. It has to come up ahead of 500 meters. The engineers tell me it's going to cost 400 million US to build that pipeline. And when the water comes to our city, it is going to be four times more than the cost of our present water. And what our own engineers are saying is we need to duplicate the pipeline from Incisa. We need to duplicate the pipeline from Chavez. We need to rehabilitate the Nema water purification works. We need to double the Tuli Reservoir on the Haumahan Road. We need to build glass pop dam down here in Balabala. And all of that will only cost about 200 million. Half the cost of Guashangani. And we are saying this as a council. That that is where the solution is to our water. But we have to deal with government. So we are in that process. The reason I'm telling you this is to explain to you why I am daunted by that, that title of the fixer. Why all of us are daunted. We are all sober about this because we understand. When we look at the heavens now and the lack of rain so far this season, We've only had four millimeters in our great city in November so far. 
and it's hot. And we don't have immediate solutions. So, I'm not here to depress you. I'm here to say that we must be sober. We must be realistic about the task that we have to do together. When I look at this hall, and when I see the talent of our young children, it pains my heart that you aren't home, that you are in a foreign city. We need to sort our city out, and we need to sort our entire country out so that you can come, come home with your talent, with the skills that you've learned. And that is what we intend trying to do in the next five years, against these odds. Now, my understanding and, and the most important part of this meeting today is for us to hear from you. In my meeting last night with the Mayor of Johannesburg, I've said that we need closer cooperation between our two cities. There are deep-rooted cultural and historical ties between this city and Bulawayo. Nzidikasi came from this area before he came up in 1837. There are those historical links. It is a natural link. We need to see how we can get Johannesburg businesses, for example, to invest in our city. We've got all those empty factories with excess capacity. And in this city, they are running out of space and capacity. So those are the things that we need to do at a city-to-city -city level. But there's also a person to person and person to the city council level. And what I was told last night is that one of the key issues that you face is housing at home. That you are having difficulty in securing stands at home. That the, the process is complicated. That you are being disadvantaged because you are here and others are there and yet that is where you come from and that is your home so <laughs> councillor Mahama will confirm that what i've said to the customers what i've said to our staff our role is to facilitate not to obstruct our role is to see where the blockages are. Our role is to serve, not to be served. We are not here elected to see what cars or positions or houses we can get for ourselves. We are here to serve the citizens and to make sure that we smooth their path. And we do it in a way without corruption. People should not get stands by paying employees or others to get those stands. It needs to be equal. We need proper waiting. And I say this to all of you now. If anybody here or any of your relatives finds that people are putting obstructions in your way is asking for a bribe or a facilitation fee i want to know about it if you have difficulty getting hold of me you can do so through the foundation they know how to get hold of me i'm trying to or we are trying to unblock a lot of things that have not got done in the city. Egodini, for a start. That project which has been waiting 12 years, which is primarily designed for poor people, for vendors, and yet has not provided the facilities. And we are looking very closely at every aspect, every contract, 
but we need your help. If there are people saying they are obstructing you so that they can get a bribe out of you, we need to know so that we can deal with it. And we will deal with it. We are committed to doing that with you. I don't want to take much more of your time this morning because I think the most important thing today is for us, the three of us, to hear from you so that we have that dialogue. We hear what your problems are and so that we can start to work out the solutions to those. Because we need your investment. We need you to get your stands. We need you to building, start building your houses so that you are prepared to come home. There may, there may be issues beyond housing that we need to hear from you. So I thank you once again. I, I can't tell you how heartwarmed I am by your reception today, the effort that you've taken, this wonderful uh, demonstration. You know, I'm a Kulu now myself. I've got seven. I have seven grandchildren and the last batch of dancers were like my grandchildren. Um, and it, it really warms my heart, that, that sense of goodwill, the spirit that has been shown to me and, and us from that. And so I hope that we can continue that spirit and that this will be the start of much better cooperation and communication between the community here and throughout South Africa and our council. Our, our council. One of the things we are going to have to work out is, is how we get better communication, how we understand the issues better that are emerging from this community because you are a critical part of our city and our nation. See you all.